All right, my friends, so the number one thing when it comes to doing Roth conversions or your decision in which to do that is not your actual tax bracket. It's actual the dollars you pay in taxes or the dollars you save. It's the net dollar. So I've been getting this question a lot. Um, I want to go into a deep uh, dive in this here tonight. So I hope you find this informative. All right, so basically what it is, we have three things you've got to consider when it comes to Roth conversions, all right? And uh, we're going to go to an example of a guy I'm working with right now. Um, the first is if you're married filing jointly, all right? So if you're MFJ, all right, that means you are going to be exposed to the widow's tax tract uh, at the death of the first to go. So Josh and Charlotte, I'm a man, I'm four years older, I die first, and Charlotte will receive my IRA and as such, she'll, she'll have all the same income except a little bit less of Social Security, uh, but she'll have one less tax um, standard deduction. So our standard deduction will go from 27000 to 13600 whatever it is at that point. And her tax brackets go up. And so what I mean by that, for a married filing jointly, you, you have basically $110,000 of AGI and you're still in the 12% tax bracket. All right, because that's roughly eighty thousand dollars of taxable income uh, for you to be in the, uh, the, uh, the to stay in the twelve percent tax bracket. If you're single, you basically have uh, uh, we'll see about eh, fifty five thousand of AGI to be in the twelve percent tax bracket. All right, so what happens now is you lose a standard deduction going from married filing jointly to single. All right, so you have Charlotte and me with twenty seven thousand of uh, standard deductions. If it's just her, she loses basically half that. So she'll only have 13,300 or whatever it is, or 13,600. On top of that, any income above 55,000 here is subject to 22% taxes, all right? So we have 60,000 of taxable income. She's at the 22% uh, tax bracket. Now the entirety won't be subject to 22%. But she is now in a 22% tax bracket with any amount of taxable income roughly above 55,000. However, when it's both she and I, all right, we can have, you know, we can have $110,000 basically, uh, you know, before we're the 22% 20, the tax bracket. Not basically, literally. So in this case, that is the widow's tax trap. You lose one standard deduction, and on top of that, your tax brackets go way down, way down. They're shrunken tax brackets, which means more of your income will be subject to, uh, to higher income tax rates. I hope that makes sense. A lot of people think, well, Josh, uh, when, she, when you die, she'll, you, she will only have 50% of the taxable income. No, that's not true. But only thing she's going to lose when I die is the lower of the two Social Security benefits. That's it. She'll inherit my IRA. She'll have all the same income she had before. She'll lose a smaller of the social security benefits. So she might lose ten to fifteen thousand dollars of income, but it'll still be well above sixty thousand, so uh, fifty-five thousand. So she'll still be well into the twenty-two, if not twenty-four percent tax bracket as a single person, which means a less income, but more taxes due because she is single. That's the widow's tax trap. All right, part two. Do you have a pension? All right. Uh, if you have a pension, you're, it's going to be tough to make the case for Roth conversions. And the reason for that is if you don't have a pension, you're more likely to be subject to the tax torpedo when it comes to Social Security benefits. I don't want to dive into this here too much today because I've done a lot of videos on that. But just for simplicity, if you are in the 0, 10, or 12% tax bracket, and when you have our on Social Security, all right, you're in the zero to 10 to 12 percent tax bracket, mostly your Social Security isn't subject to taxation. However, when you take a $10,000 distribution, I'm just using that for a nice round number because it's easy to remember. When you take a $10,000 distribution, if you're in these tax brackets here, that distribution doesn't just add 10,000 to your adjusted gross income, it could add as much as 18,500 because of the tax torpedo for Social Security. So basically what has happened here is that if you're in the zero, 10 or 12% tax bracket, most likely none of your Social Security benefits are subject to taxation. The minute you take a large enough IRA to make your Social Security benefits subject to taxation, not only is the first penny subject, it could be up to 85% of your benefits are subject to taxation, which not only adds the $10,000 IRA distribution that you took out, 
to spend for RMD or whatever, but it now increases and adds 8,500 potentially on top of the 10,000 you took out because now 85% of your social security is subject to tax. I know it's crazy. I'm not gonna dive into that too much here, but that's the tax torpedo. So if you're, if you're married filing jointly, you gotta worry about the widow's tax trap. If you're a, a low taxpayer, which probably means you don't have a, ta a taxable income, which probably means you don't have a pension, then you have to worry about the tax torpedo. Those two things you got to consider right there, whether or not it makes sense to do a Roth. So in this case, I'm working with a guy who's single. Let's uh, let's get rid of, let's erase this right here. He's single and he has a pension, and because he's single as a widower, he has his ex was. Uh, deceased wife's social security benefits that he's getting while he's waiting for his own benefits to keep growing with the delayed earnings credit. So it's a good move. So he's getting survivor benefits. So in this case, he's single. I think he's 62. I can't remember exactly how much his pension is, but we'll just say 35000 for simplicity. All right, so it's 35000 pension. I just can't remember. And we'll say 25000 survivor social security benefits. All right, so basically, he because he's single, we don't have to worry about the widow's tax trap. It's he's already living with it right now, all right, because it's already done. I mean, he went from married filing jointly to a single taxpayer. Thus, uh, the widow's tax trap is, is he's already engaged in that. Um, so, uh, Social Security survivor benefit. Well, we don't really have to worry too much about the widow's about the tax torpedo either. Now, let's do the quick numbers real quick. The reason is because we can see he's already going to have a bulk, if not all, of his Social Security subject to taxation. And the max you can have is 85%. So what we're going to see here is, remember, whenever you're trying to figure out your taxation on Social Security benefits, you're trying to figure out your provisional income. How much of your Social Security benefits is subject to taxation? you got to figure that out first before you figure out what your taxable income is. So in this case, we take half of the $25,000, and that's going to be $12,500. We add to $35,000. That will be $47,500 will be his... Uh, his, his provisional income, not his AGI, not his taxable income, is provisional. The first 25000 none of that is subject to taxation. The next 9000 uh, 50% of that is subject to taxation, so it's 4500 And the next, uh, it's at 13, it looks like uh, 13, that was going to be 34, 13500 Eighty-five percent of that is subject to taxation, and if I have my yeah, I got my trusted calculator. Thirteen thousand five hundred times 0 0.85, eleven thousand. We're just going to say eleven thousand five hundred for simplicity. All right, so eleven thousand five hundred. Oops, eleven thousand five hundred plus forty-five hundred. Sixteen thousand of his twenty-five thousand so, uh, dollars of Social Security will be subject to taxation. So in this case, sixteen divided by twenty-five. 64% of his Social Security is subject to taxation. No big deal. So he has 35000 as a pension, 16000 Social Security, 151000 is his AGI. All right, so 51000 is AGI, and we're just going to say for simplicity, 13000 is a standard deduction. So that means, what's that, 38000 roughly, right? 51 minus 13, 51 minus 13. Yeah, 38000 is his taxable income. So he is right at the 12% tax bracket, right there. All right, so uh, so anything so anything he gets above that is going to make. Well, let me just show you that. I'll show you the tax torpedo. If he took a $10,000 distribution from his IRA, all right, well, I'm going to show you what happens here. So he's at $38,000. He's at the 10% tax bracket. I mean, the 12% tax bracket, right at the max. So if he took a $35,000 uh, $10, IRA distribution, he's got $35,000 from pension, uh, $25,000 from Social Security, but, uh, Social Security, and a $10,000 IRA distribution. All right. So again, we take, half, we take half the Social Security plus his pension. That gives us $47,500 plus the $10,000 IRA. $57,500 is his. Uh, provisional income. Again, provisional income is decide how much of your Social Security is subject to taxation. Uh, we know the first 25000 is nothing. Zero. The next 9400 is. All right. So we know it's going to be 23500 will be subject. 85% of that is taxable. All right. So 23500 and this might be make his whole so the, the entirety of a social security benefit taxable. Let's see. All right, so twenty three thousand five hundred times 0.85. 
uh, it's twenty thousand uh, bucks. Yeah, so the so eighty five percent of his social security will be subject to taxation here. So we know 0.85. So twenty one thousand two hundred fifty will be subject to taxation. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so twenty one thousand two fifty. So in this case, an IRA, a ten thousand dollar IRA distribution, uh, increased his ta his AGI. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right. So that ten thousand dollar IRA distribution uh, that he took in twenty one thousand two fifty is now taxable Social Security. So we take thirty five thousand pension, ten thousand IRA, twenty one thousand two fifty. We'll just say twenty one thousand for simplicity. Twenty one thousand. That means we have six uh, sixty six thousand bucks. So his his, a, his gross income AGI is sixty six thousand. So basically, what happened was is that yeah he increased his taxable income. His AGI, excuse me, uh, by from fifty-one thousand to sixty-six thousand. So he increased his uh, adjusted gross income by fifty percent. So it went up by fifteen thousand, even though he only took a ten thousand dollar IRA distribution. I cannot stress this enough. Here was his AGI with no IRA distribution, fifty-one thousand. Here is his AGI now with a ten thousand dollar IRA distribution. Do you see the difference? AGI with no IRA distribution, AGI with a $10,000 distribution. 66 minus 51 is $15,000. He increased his AGI by 15,000 even though even though he only had what? A $10,000 IRA distribution. And that's the evil of the tax code. But be as it may, the question still remains, should we do Roth conversions? Well, that's the problem we have with this guy here. He is already in the tax trap the tax torpedo. So if he were to do Roth conversions, it's in this case right here, a $10,000 IRA distribution is a $10,000 Roth conversion. It's the exact same thing. You can uh, do a $10,000 IRA distribution to go gamble Las Vegas. You could do $10,000 IRA distribution to put a new shingles on. You could do a $10,000 uh, IRA distribution to sniff up your nose. You could do a $10,000 IRA distribution to do a Roth conversion. Either way, $10,000 is coming out of your IRA. In this example here, that's going to increase his taxable income by 50, or his AGI by $15,000. All right. So that's not good, man. That's not good. That's the, that's the tax torpedo. So he's already in the tax torpedo. There's nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do about it. So he's single with a pension. He's already in the tax torpedo. He's already in a, the widow's tax trap. Should, should he do Roth conversions? And I don't think so. And here's so here's what we're going to go into now as well, because he he's already in the tax torpedo. He is already uh, in the widow's tax trap. So the question is, what benefit will it serve for him to do Roth conversion? So what he'll say, what the last thing we got to say, all right. So we're going to say, are you married? No. Pension? Yes. All right. Tax rates, future tax rates. Up. All right, so in this case, he's got one uh, an XX check because the future tax rates are going up. So he's sitting there thinking, I should do Roth conversions because the future tax rates are going up. We know for a fact, most likely it's going to go from 22 to 25, from 24 to 28, from, was it uh, 28 now to was it 28, 20, 24, 28? I can't remember. What's that? Is, is it 28 now, I think? Is it 28? No, it's 33, right? 33 to 35. I can't remember. I, mostly I'm just focused here, right here. So we know that because the Trump tax bill is going to go away, it's going to sunset in 2025, most likely the tax rates are going up. So his concern is, okay, let's use an example. $100,000. I'd rather pay $22,000 in taxes today to avoid $25,000 in five years, if that makes sense. So he says, I'd rather save $3,000 of taxes. <sighs> but see, here's the problem, man. It's not going to be that smooth. 
$100,000 today might not be $100,000 in the future. It just, I can't, this is where it gets dicey. And the fact that these two things right here are X's says, I don't think you should do that. So let's look into this. So let's say it does $100,000 Roth conversion. It's $22,000 in taxes today. All right, so he's going to be net with, we're not going to use any state. So it'd be net with 78,000 bucks. All right, so let's just say, I don't know, we're going to say it grows at a clip of a, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll double it. We'll just use that for example. 7.2% a year for 10 years. This will grow to $78,000. Uh, it'd be what? 156000 78 times 2. Yeah, 156000 All right. All right, so it's 156000 in 10 years. So he's made he's made $78,000 tax-free because we're going to say he had the 22000 taken out from the IRA. It's worth $156,000 in, in uh in 10 years. That looks like a pretty good deal, right? Well, the problem is, what if we just put 100,000 left that there, $100,000, and it grew to 7.2% a year as well. Now we're at 2,200,000. All right, but now he's got to pay tax on that 200,000 at 25%. So what's going to happen here? Because the tax rates have gone up. So that is net, and here is gross. So we're going to lose. Uh, what's that? We're going to lose uh, fifty thousand bucks. So now we're at one hundred fifty thousand. So he is down six thousand bucks in ten years. In that same scenario, because before he paid twenty two percent on the hundred thousand bucks, it grew at seven point two, and now he's paying twenty five percent on the total growth. So he's out six thousand dollars but is he truly out six thousand bucks well the answer is yes if you look at it like a vacuum like that but who's to say he has to take the whole entirety of that two hundred thousand dollars out he won't man he'll only be 72 years old at that point so at that point 72 years old his rmds are only 3.8 percent so you see what i'm saying so he can spread that uh twenty five thousand dollar income out over many many years 25% um, income tax out over many years. He's only at a 3.8% distribution. So he's not taking one lump sum like here, just not. Even though he's in a higher tax bracket, he's only have to take 3.8% the first year. All right, so 3.8% the first year, 200,000, that's what, seven, uh, 7,600 bucks times 3.8%. Yeah, 7,600 bucks. So it's gonna take him four years or three years essentially it was just rmds before he even had the same amount of taxation he did up here when he took the roth out but here's the big concern i have a lot of people i think miss this all right so what if we uh whew, here's the big one so that right there isn't a slam dunk as much as you think that's assuming a pretty good rate of return it's you know it is he's gonna save some money but at the end of the day it's uh, you're talking a couple extra thousand bucks of tax of uh, of taxable income uh, for ten more years of having access to that money, all right? And then on top of that, you can spread the tax rates over a couple more years. So it's going to be basically going to take thirteen to fourteen years before uh, the the Roth works more beneficially to him in that category right there, going from twenty two percent to twenty five percent. That's just a long time. However, on the other hand, what if that hundred thousand dollars, all right? And now he pays twelve percent. Uh, you know, he pays twenty-two percent tax. It's worth seventy-eight thousand bucks. What if the market falls, or what if it stays flat, or falls? You know, let's say twenty percent. Uh, so let's right, gotta get my trusty calculator. Seventy-eight thousand times point two. It's down to sixty-two thousand four hundred. All right, so 62400 is what it's at now after paying the taxes in a market decline. If you just would have left it in the IRA, it's at $80,000. You see what I'm saying? So now what happens is, now we're going to say it doubles at 7.2%. All right, so over the next 10 years, it's going to go to 7.2. So this will be worth one sixty at a 25% tax bracket. And this will be worth one twenty. we'll just say, was that one twenty five? Twelve? Oh, no. 115. Let's see what it would be worth here. 62.4 times 2. 100, yeah, 125. Yeah, I had that. So we got 125 here. All right, so 160,000 at, at 25%. 160 minus 25%. So that'd be worth 120. 
Again, even that, it's only a $5,000 difference. That's it. But what if the market never goes back up? What if it just stays flat? What if it goes Japan style and only grows at 1% a year? You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's where the... The issue is if the market just stays flat or goes down after you, t after you take the you pay the tax, you don't know that's going to go back up. So is it worth it to lose that money, that $22,000, where the gain you might get an extra 5000 bucks later on, that's you know, 10, 15 years from now? Uh, you know, if you have married filing jointly and no pension, yeah, it would be worth it. There's lots of different ways to be worth it. But in this case, I, I don't see that's beneficial. What if the market stays flat? And you're out, to, I mean, let's just do that for example. So now the market stays flat, all right? So you do $100,000 in a Roth, you're paying 22,000 in taxes, now you got 78,000 bucks, and we'll just say the market's flat, all right? Just boop, boop, boop. All right, now you got 100,000 bucks in the traditional IRA. We're assuming you invest the same way, is what I'm trying to say. It stays flat, it's at 100,000 bucks. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you're still paying $25,000, essentially is what I'm trying to get at. So now you're at 75000 versus 78000 So you're still better off here, but that's way down the road. I don't know, man. It doesn't seem, I don't think that's, I don't think that's enough benefit at all to do it. Not in the least. It's gotta be more than that. Now, some people say, well, I know the tax would go way high. I know, and don't forget, you don't have access. This is the thing that stinks. Once you do this taxes and you lose that $22,000, that $22,000 is gone. You don't have access to it anymore, man. It's gone. If the market turns against you, you can't tell the IRS, I want a do-over. You used to be able to do that. You can't do that anymore. Here you got 100,000 bucks. Yeah, you gotta pay tax on it, but what if your income tax uh, falls off a cliff for whatever reason? I mean, what, who knows what could happen? I just don't see a huge benefit there, my friends. If you're married, if you're not married, if you got a pension, even if the tax rates go from 22 to 25, I just, uh, I don't see a huge benefit in that. I don't. Now, you, I'm not here to tell you you should not do it if you want to. The guy I'm working with now, he's, you know, he's probably going to do 25,000 a year. We can't make the numbers work to be magical, and we can't make them not to. It's just, it is what it is, man. I say, no, if you want tax diversification, I got no qualm with that. But we're not going to solve any huge tax problems by doing Roth conversions for the guy in that category. We're just or late in that category. We're just not. All you're going to do is ultimately, for every hundred thousand dollars, you're potentially going to pay three to five thousand dollars less in taxes, ten to fifteen years from now. You know that might be a big deal, and that doesn't seem like a huge deal to me to be without twenty-two thousand dollars on the front end and hoping that I'm going to recapture that ten to fifteen years from now. Hope that makes sense. Remember, a bird in the hand is always better than the two in the bush. When I spend 22000 today on taxes, I'm doing it under the auspices that I will recoup that and make some money in the future. I'm losing 22000 now and the hope to gain three to 5000 10 to 15 years now. That just does not seem like a good investment to me at all. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. We'd love to hear comments. Thanks now.